So here we have the S-Plan with all the various connections in there. We've got the CPCs, the line, the neutrals and the switch lives. And yes, it does start looking a bit busy, doesn't it? You'll notice I've run a CPC to every piece of equipment. Some pieces are class two. They don't actually need a CPC connection as such, but there's a CPC connection in the cable and all pieces of electrical equipment should have a CPC run to them because they might be changed for something else at a future date. So in class two, for example, you would put the CPC in a, in a parking spot. There's sometimes a little CPC parking spot, a little earth nut to put it into. Or if not, just put in a little connector block so it doesn't move about and can't touch anything. So you always want a CPC to every point. You'll also notice I've run neutrals to every point as well. And again, sometimes the neutral's not needed but it might be needed in the future. Um, the thermostat, for example, the, pop, the heating thermostat, sometimes they do require a neutral. There's a little heater in there to help the functionality of the thermostat, and that requires a neutral. So it's always a good idea to know what the actual equipment is you're going to be installing, and then you can make sure you run the right cable with the right amount of conductors in it. You don't want to be in a situation where you've run your cable and everything's been made good and plastered over and floorboards down and everything, and you find out they've specified a thermostat that requires a neutral, and you've only run a, a, a three-car cable, you're going to be in trouble. And that's when people start using the CPC as live conductors. Can't use CPCs as live conductors ever. It's just something you can't do. So always make sure you run the right cable with the right amount of conductors in that cable. There's generally two types of cable we use in domestic UK heating systems. We've got the flat PVC twin and earth type cable, which we use for the fixed wiring that goes to your, your fuse spur, that kind of thing. And you've got your flexible cable, which we use to go through all the various different accessories. The um, spur and the clock, and the pump and the valves, they're generally in the same cupboard, so we can run flex of these cables quite easily. There's no large distance, it's often only less than a metre or more to each of the individual pieces. Um, so we can run our cable, cable clamped at both ends, so it's nicely installed, it's easy to use. We also use flex as well because there's a slight bit of vibration in these heating circuits. We've got this pump which is turning around all the time, it's just a little slight vibration. And over the months and years, that could loosen solid um, copper conductors like you get in Twin and Earth. So we use flex cable. We generally use flex cable to the appliances and that kind of thing. We'd have the fixed wiring, the PVC to the switch. And from the switch, we'd have the flexible cable, um, cable clamp, so it's nicely and tightly installed. We have the issue, though, when we've got the room stat. That's probably one of the things that is most remote. It can be in a different room. Your tank can be as well. And what cable do we run to that? Um, can we run flexible cable and have that buried in the wall? Now the regs said that you, you can use um, flexible cable in fixed wiring, but it has to be suitable. It has to be of the heavy duty type. And if it's not, it has to be mechanically protected. So if you are running flex to a remote location because you want to use it because it's got more cores, for example, um, and it's easy to terminate in the, in the actual accessories, you can use flex, but it's got to be mechanically protected um, or the heavy duty type cable. So make sure you use the tight right type of flex um, for the job. Make sure you've got the correct core conductor size for the current that's going to be used. It's only a three amp circuit, so it's, it's not a large current using um, piece of equipment um, to set up your heating system. So make sure you've got the, uh, the correct type of cable, the correct conductor size, and also, most importantly as well, make sure you've got the right amount of conductors in that cable for what you're going to need. Like um, the flex to your 3 amp spur, the 3 core flex, you just need your live neutral and earth in. But to your programmer, you might need up to 5 cores. Your, your thermostat, you're going to need a live in, live out. might need a neutral, and you'll have your CPC as well. So make sure you run the cable with the right amount of cores, because you don't want to run a 3 core and find out, oh, hang on a second. I've only got me live neutral and earth. I need a switch live or I need a neutral. 
um, then you think, oh, I'm going to have to pinch the CPC um, for one of the live conductors. And you you can't, just can't do that. You can't use a CPC ever as a live conductor. So make sure you run the cable with the right amount of conductors in it. Um, so like I say, you've got your fixed wiring and your flexible wiring. The immersion heater, for example, this is an example where you use both types of cable. You're going to use a flat PVC for your fixed wire installation. This is the cable coming from your fuse board. That's your flat PVC cable, which is ran to the switch. And then from the switch, you'd run that in flex cable. That's just the best way of doing it. Cable clamped at both ends. It's perfectly safe. So yes, make sure you use the right type of flex. Provide mechanical protection if it's needed. Make sure it's the right size, the right amount of conductors, and uh, you won't get into any trouble. Excellent, thanks. Sheathing is always important when it comes to uh, installing your cable. In a five core flex, you, you've got five conductors, and you've got your brown, which is live, your blue, which is your neutral, your green and yellow, which is your circuit protective, and then you've got the two other conductors, which are often gray and black. Now it's up to the electrician what he wants to do with these cables. But if these are going to be switch wires, like in a, a wiring center, you would sleeve these in brown sleeving, so the person knows that this is a live conductor. If you just left it grey, um, it would leave doubt in somebody's mind what that conductor is actually doing. Could it be a neutral? Could it be something else? Same in your three corner earth. Your brown would be your live, your green and yellow sleeving would go over the bare copper conductor. That's only ever used, the bare copper conductor is only ever used as a circuit protective conductor. We sleeve that in green and yellow. And again, your, your brown, your black and your, your grey will be sleeved in brown sleeving if they are switch wires, if they are live conductors. Now, because you've got the example in the three corner earth, where you do need a neutral. So you've got your live, your brown, uh, your, your CPC, the copper, bare copper, that's um, your CPC. Now you've got your black and your grey. Now the guidance is that for the live conductor, for the black, you would sleeve that in brown sleeving and you would use the grey as the neutral conductor and you would sleeve that in blue sleeving. The reason for this is known as the denutralizing of the black conductor. The black conductor used to be a neutral conductor. They changed all the colouring for the cables in the UK and the colour for neutral is now blue. So they're trying to get away from using black and making people think that the black is not a light, uh, is not a neutral conductor anymore. So they're denutralizing that. So this recommend that you use the gray as the neutral conductor and sleeve that in blue. And obviously if the black is a live conductor, you sleeve that in brown. So you have to be careful there and do sleeve it correctly. And this is often you see um, multi-car cable and it hasn't been sleeved and you don't know what that conductor does. It could be a live, it could be a neutral. So that's why it's important to identify what that cable is doing. As in your SWA, which is often just a three core cable, you have your brown, your black, and your grey. And in this example, um, you would the brown is always live. You would use the black as the CPC and sleeve that in green and yellow sleeving. And the blue would be the neutral, and you would sleeve that in blue. And we've got the example of the switch wire when it's going from your light switch up to your ceiling rows. This is just a switch wire. There's no neutral in it, and often. Twin and Earth is used for that, and that's often got brown and blue conductors in the copper conductor for the CPC. In this example, you would use the brown as your permanent live, and the blue would be your switch live, and you would sleeve that in brown um, sleeving to um, identify that as a live switch wire. So remember, any live conductor you sleeve in brown, if it's a neutral conductor, you sleeve in blue. The circuit protective conductor is always green and yellow, and it's never used for anything else. You never sleeve that in a different colour and use it for something else. That's only ever a CPC. And there you, that's your cable sheathing. So here we have the final connections for this S plan to the wiring centre, and there's no getting away from it. There's a lot of cables, and it just becomes overwhelming to look at. Uh, you can help yourself though by trying to keep it as neat and tidy as possible. What I like to do is run all the neutrals and the CPCs around the outside of the enclosure. The neutrals and CPCs, they're just all terminated in their own separate terminal. All the neutrals are common, your CPCs are common, so you don't have to worry about that. It's these connections you want to have a good view of because this is where you can make mistakes. 
this is where you can connect the wrong thing to the wrong thing and your central heating won't work properly so keep this area nice and clear all the other stuff around the outside this is why having longer cables can help it might seem like odd going all the way around just going across when you get cables crossing each other all the time it just becomes a jumbled mess try and keep it nice and tidy everything around the outside uh, another thing I like to do is try and have a system with your coloured wires as well like uh, in your five core cable for example I always like to use the brown as a permanent live if it's going somewhere and the grey and the black I use those as my switch outputs sleeved accordingly and do the same for each two port for, uh, for each uh, stat um, your live going in is brown your live going into your hot water stat is brown and uh, you switch live out is black I always have black first when we switch lives out and then if I need another switch live out I'll use the grey um, as you can see the greys um, the run it's five core cable so there's a grey in the cable but it's not needed at this point so that is just terminated in a little connector block and again in the wiring centre that is just putting a little connector block and terminated keeps it nice and safe it won't move around and won't touch anything um, don't just cut it short at the cable at the end of the um, cable um, it might be needed in the future so there you go that's your S plan wiring um, yeah like I said just try and keep it as neat as possible sleeve everything use the correct conductors the correct cable never use the CPCs as live conductors and nice and neat it'll help you and it'll certainly help the person further down the line if there's any issues anyway good luck with that for a full description of the S-Plan system please watch my previous video S-Plan made simple okay thanks